Alright. I, I, I have to, I have to go and loot, uh, yeah, one more item, there it is, the lost heirloom. Allows the recollection, or recollection rather, of one's unblighted form. Ah, okay. So if I want to... You may now access Blightborn mode. Toggle these optional challenges modes to tailor your desired game experiment, uh, experience. You may now access mal uh, maligned memories. Prepare for back-to-back -back battles against each previously purified boss? Yo, what? Okay, so this I think is instead of the other one. Yeah, yeah, so now we turn into the form that we had at the beginning of the game. Oh, I see. Begin boss rush. So I can set up my, yeah, yeah, so I can set up my, uh, my run exactly how I want it. That's sick, man. That's, uh, actually some replayability here at the end. That's fun. Yeah, it's like a hardcore mode. Okay, I'll do one, I'll do one. Boss rush, just to see what it's like. Okay, so you just start at the beginning. Begin boss rushy. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah, there's a timer at the top. So this is how, if you want it to be a speedrunner, you can easily practice as well, I guess. I mean, I obviously don't want to be a speedrunner, because that would be tilting as hell. So wait, is she as strong as she- Like, no, she would die to like four hits if she was similar to the boss that we had at the very start of the game. Yeah, the boss definitely is skilled. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. I wonder if my abilities reset. I can use her ability against her. That's kind of funny, actually. Like here, I have I have the same thing. <laughs> Guardian secret. gonna give me all the bosses in order okay so I got plus seven back on my abilities oh yeah it's just straight into Garrett that's funny okay I just okay that was not ideal Garrett I didn't get all my heals though What a great way to get some more, like, replayability, though, other than just, like, a new game plus. I mean, I never cared too much about replayability myself, but this is... Yeah, it's a fun way of doing it. Because I know there's a lot of people that are like, I only play a game if I can get at least one million hours out of it. Plus, I mean... They already put in all the work for these bosses. May as well, uh... Put something like this in. Yeah. Oh, shit, I forgot about his backswing. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you want to do a speed run, practicing the boss fights like that is definitely a great way of doing it. Anyways, guys, there it is. Everything's done.
It's been a while since I've 100 percent at a game. Nice. <sighs> okay, so... I do want to watch a lore video. Although, I'd like to have, like, not one that's, like, an hour long. Because sometimes those lore videos are a little too long. There's one that's 51 minutes. Play the mortuary assistant for Halloween? Uh, maybe I will, Agarthus. Thank you for the 13 months. Thank you also, actually, Fear Dragon for the resub. Sorry, I didn't realize uh, your resub during that fight. Or during the cinematic, but I appreciate you. There's a 51 minute long video about the lore of this game. Is there not like one that's like a little shorter than that? <laughs> um, there's a five minute edition? Okay, that sounds more up my alley. Yeah, we'll watch that one in a moment. Um, so real quick. The game overall is really good. Yeah. I like the boss fights. I like the world quite a bit as well. I have complained about a couple things in my playthrough, and a lot of that is personal preference, I guess. First thing is the music. I think the music is amazing. The music is really good. However, since the rooms are so big, and the music starts looping after like two, three minutes, if you're spending like upwards of two hours in a zone, which I easily did, in some cases longer, you basically heard the same loop over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, you could complete it faster. But uh, yeah, I wish there was a little bit more variety when it came to that. I also think the music started out really strong and it ended really strong, but in the middle, maybe not as recognizable, especially in those zones in the top right and in the bottom. Like there was a little bit, a little bit less um, reminiscent, but I thought the early game was fantastic. Um, final boss fight. Yeah, the Twin Spires one was pretty, pretty good. Yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's, you know, maybe I'm just not remembering those too much, but... I thought the early game music was a little bit nicer. Maybe it's also because it's sadder, I guess. I usually like the sad music quite a bit, but... Um... I think the final boss fight in the B ending... And honestly, in the C ending as well. Almost a little too easy. Like, everything deals a lot of damage, of course. And, like, the boss has a lot of health, of course, but... Most of those abilities, not too exciting and pretty easy to dodge. I mean, I say that in hindsight, but obviously I also collected everything. Uh, I also obviously collected everything, so that definitely makes the final fight a little bit, yeah, a little bit more straightforward. Um, I think the game has a little much backpedaling. I, I, I think it would be nice... If you could, like, put markers on the mini-map or on the map or something. Like, say, I, you come across one of those red walls. Like, I came across, like, five dozen times. It'd be nice if I could just plot a little marker on there so I don't have to, you know, backpedal to that particular room. Like, if I could put a little red marker over there and, like, maybe one of those yellow doors that I couldn't open until I unlocked that or until, like, a, a double jump or something. That would be nice. That way I wouldn't have to go back and forth a million times because... Basically now what I did is every time I unlocked the main ability and I didn't know where to go, I started again at the very beginning. And then I moved through the whole game essentially again. I understand that's how Metroidvania games work and I understand that part, but this is just, you know, personal preference. Look, I think that's less of a problem if you play the game without streaming. Yeah, that's true. I think a lot of people would probably just Google it, right? It's like all red walls or like all double jump in the game, something like that. It's a, it's a little, a little, a little, little on the heavy, heavy end when it comes to backtracking, which I didn't experience to the same extent in uh, some of these other games, but that's okay. Anyway, um, very good game overall. Yeah, very good game. I think if you enjoyed Hollow Knight and you enjoyed Ori and Ori and the Will of the Wisps, you enjoyed this one too. Yeah, I would say that it's not quite as good as those two. And for what it's worth, I didn't play um, Hollow Knight as much as I did play this game. But um, it's up there. Wait, there's one Steam achievement left? Where do you guys even see that? Wait, I missed one Steam achievement? Reach level 100? What level was I? <laughs> 91? Yeah, no, I, I'm not, I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. <laughs> 
Uh, so this game, how much is it? 25 euro. I mean, that's well worth your money. If you want to, you can uh, probably get it cheaper at some later time. But uh, I could farm and fishes, end game fishes. Yeah, I don't, I don't really care. Anyways, very fun game. Highly recommend it. Let's go watch the lore video just so we kind of understand what's going on. I do kind of like the cryptic storytelling, by the way. The one that, you know, especially from software, I guess, popularizing gaming. It's kind of cool. Imagine if you could, a prosperous and wealth. Okay, so this is a video by the Inhuman One. In this video, I provide a clear and concise explanation of the rich plot of Ender Lilies. <laughs> Great game, you'll love it as he uninstalls. That's a classic, dude. The kingdom of seven nations. Imagine if you could, a prosperous and wealthy kingdom of seven nations, complete with magical priestesses and an immortal army. Such a place would be seemingly indestructible and would surely survive the test of time. However, one day the kingdom known as Land's End would be afflicted by a devastating plague that mutated the infected into a grotesque, mindless monstrosities. A never-ending torrential downpour known as the Reign of Death brought with it something far worse than death. It is this land of Ender Lilies that we'll be exploring today so that we may learn of a king's sins and the insurmountable burden that children were fated to suffer before they could even take their first breath. So, without further ado, let's get started. Our story begins as a young girl dressed in white awakens from her slumber, devoid of all memories and no knowledge of who she is or where she may be. She bravely ventures deeper into the white parish along with the enigmatic umbral knight in search for answers. It isn't long before she discovers her name is Lily and that she belongs to an order of powerful priestesses that are tasked with the purification of the blight that has ravaged Land's End. Guys, I can't help but notice that the automated captions for this video are really good. If you try that out on any of my videos, it doesn't work. It, it, like, it just... Anyways. With each new soul purified, Lily's frail physical form absorbed the mutagenic It blood. even got frail physical f I, I Anyway, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Lily's frail physical form absorbed the mutagenic blight and freed those who were doomed to an eternal, misshapen existence of madness. The toll on her body was great, and her ally, the Umbral Knight, urged her to abandon her duties and escape with her life. But Lily, the ever selfless and dutiful priestess, trudged ever onward. In time, she learned that she was the last of the white priestesses and that her continued purification of blight would eventually lead to her inevitable demise. Lily soon discovered that the King of Land's End had come to this new continent with conquest in mind and had warred with the native race of people known as the Ancients. It wasn't long before the King's mission was complete. With the Ancients all but eradicated, save for a young girl dressed in white, Land's End was under new leadership. Whether it was fate or some other cruel design, the king had in all essence kidnapped an orphan child and took her as his own. Eventually, the blight that had once burrowed deep below the land surfaced and began to take hold of the citizens of Land's End. The blight was swift and merciless as it immediately combined and twisted life forms into grotesque shapes vaguely reminiscent of their former human selves. Okay. As the young girl grew, so too did her powers. The king soon discovered that the solution for the blight was standing right before him. The young girl, who would later be known as the first white priestess, had the ability to purify mm, those of okay, the blight and end the threat to the kingdom. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to the king, his priestess had two vulnerabilities. The first was that although her mind would remain intact despite her exposure to the blight, her body would react similarly to any other infected individual. Second, the white priestess was sterile and unable to bear a successor by any natural means. It would seem their victory would be short-lived. Just clone her! desperation, the king formed a brigade of mages that was tasked with the research of the blight in order to end it by any means necessary. Prisoners who were deemed heretics were abducted from the stockades to be experimented on in the deepest depths of Land's End known as the Verboten Domain. This research proved fruitful and eventually, along with the selfless cooperation of the White Priestess, the Deathless Elixir was created. This concoction was designed to grant the user immortality so that they may protect the Priestess for all eternity. However, this was only part of the solution. 
The priestess's longevity was finite, but there was a solution for that as well, so that she could purify the blight perpetually. Due to her inherent sterility, there was only one method that remained. Faden of the King's Mage Brigade had devised a means to clone the first white priestess to artificially extend her life through his test subjects. The plan was foolproof, or so they thought. In time, the altruistic first priestess, known as the Priestess of the Fount, accepted her mission to purify the Blight and ventured into the verboten domain. In the depths of the abyss, she found a massive concentration of Blight and attempted to purify it. The Blight consumed her and transformed the White Priestess into a being of pure evil. She had now become the Blighted Lord, the source of the Blight that would lay waste at Land's End and reduce it to nothing more than ash and rubble. After discovering this revelation, Lily sought out an ancient relic called the Aegis Curio. With great effort, she pieced together the stone tablet fragments and deciphered the rites. With the newly restored relic in hand, Lily had the ability to purify the Blight and keep its mutagenic effects at bay. In an epic battle of good against evil, Lily triumphed and defeated mm, the Blight Lord. After performing a purification, she reunited with the Priestess of the Fount, the only maternal figure she ever knew, albeit in dreams and shattered memories, and cured Land's End of the Blight once and for all, forever restoring the land to its former beauty under the clear blue skies. Only one thing remained. What was to become of Lily, the young girl in white? Well, that's for you to decide. And until next time... It's the Inhuman One signing out. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Fun! Yeah. I always like having uh, their recap videos. When it's a little bit more cryptic and you have to actually think about it. Yeah. So I think the amulet was made with like remnants of the last priestesses that you had as well. Which is uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool game. So I haven't heard a lot of people talk about Ender Lilies, by the way. I I don't really know exactly how many people have played this game. So it's got 17,000 reviews. If we compare that to like Hollow Knight. Yeah, 221,000. Ori, 41,000. Thank you very much, Zeke. Gifting five subs. I appreciate it. 85 over here. I think actually Ori is also in the other store. <clears throat> hey, thank you very much for gifting five subs. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so... Um, it just... Okay. It just appeared twice. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely recommend this game. It's, it's a lot of fun. I uh, enjoyed it quite a bit. Popular user divine tags for this product. Did it bug out? <laughs> Female protagonist, Metroidvania. So I haven't played a lot of Metroidvania games. I mean, I've played a bunch, but not as many. Yet. I've played a bunch. Um, there's actually a couple. Is it doing it for every five? Or for, for every sub, for like every single one of the five? I think that's actually what's going on. Anyways, I wanted to go check out Skull at some point. I wanted to check out Dead Cells at some, at some point. It's, that, was, that was the fifth time, I think. Maybe six. I'm not sure. I played Tunic. Not too long ago. I didn't really like Tunic as much. I'll be honest with you. I know it's a, a popular game. And a lot of people enjoyed it. But, um... Didn't like it as much myself. But, anyways. All items. Top sellers. Hollow Knight. Control. How is Control a... St okay, maybe the Steam categories are not 100% accurate. That's... Loco, your Tunic playthrough was impressive. Right, right, right. Very good. Yeah, I heard Dead Cells is 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 a is a fun game. I haven't played that one before, but might have to go check out a couple more in this uh, category of games because it's pretty fun. I'm gonna give Ender Lilies an eight out of ten. Yep, I enjoyed it a lot. It was fun. <laughs>